what's up everybody and welcome to What's Up with Dr. A. Nathan Young. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm so glad that all over the place you're telling me how this ministry is blessing you and how you're tuning in and how you can't wait to see it on Sunday mornings. We thank God that this ministry is blessing so many people all over this region and we thank God for the fruit that it's going to produce in your life. We're going to go into our 11 a.m. service at our Covington campus right now. Meet us right back here in 26 minutes. I can't wait to see you. Pastor to pastors, including the founding pastor of our church. He's his pastor, Bishop Alfred Young Jr., my dad, and so I call him my spiritual grandfather. He is the founder and the current, still current, senior pastor of Christian Stronghold Church in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, from which he grew from six people to over 5,000 people. He's been pastoring now for 53 years, which is amazing. We thank God for him. He's the author of three books, the founder of CRD. That's where we get all of our material and courses to train up certified biblical counselors here at Faith Bible Church. He also has been called to the White House on five different occasions by three different presidents, dating back to President Ronald Reagan, and then after him, President George Bush when he launched his faith initiative, and twice by President Barack Obama when he launched the Affordable Health Care Act. He is known worldwide as a leader, as a preacher of the gospel, as a pastor. He is full of wisdom. And so I want you to give a very warm Faith Bible Church welcome to none other than Dr. Willie Richardson. Give an honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to Dr. Young. I am really appreciative of this that introduction that he gave. And I'm also thankful and grateful for the privilege and the opportunity to be able to worship with you again. Amen. This church has grown, and uh, we praise the Lord for those of you who have joined this church. You made a wonderful choice that can bless your life. And so I'm just so thankful and grateful to have been here not only just to serve, but to also have time to fellowship with the young family and do some things with a senior pastor. Uh, I would like to draw your attention to Mark chapter 11, verse 22. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word, the Bible, the Holy Scriptures. And we pray, Lord, as we look at your word today, Lord, that when we leave this place, we will believe that we have received a personal message from you for each one of us. And then, Lord, we pray for those who are Christians here today, that you will grow them. Lord, but then we pray for those who perhaps are not Christians, that they will be evangelized today through this worship service. Lord, we do pray in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. There is in nature an invisible, yet very real and definite line above which you will never find a snake. Early settlers in America re referred to this line as the snake line. Now, this is the South, and I know a lot of you are always looking for snakes. <laughs> and of course, you are not above the snake line. But there is an altitude where snakes don't go any higher. 
They will not go up that high. Uh, what it is, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but uh, I said one day I'm going to take the time to go on the internet and find out what it is. But there is an altitude, and certainly some scientists have figured out what it, what it is. Often, when they were purchasing a property, they would ask the seller whether or not the property was above the snake line. They knew the land on the mountain was more rocky, harder to clear, and not as fertile as the land in the valley. But they also knew the land in the valley was infested with rattlesnakes, adders, and copperheads. Many settlers chose to raise their families on the higher ground above the snake line rather than risk snake bites for themselves or their family. God has a spiritual snake line. There's a level of living that is higher than that of the world. There's a level of life available to God's children that allow them to live lives that are holy, pleasing to the Lord, and free from many of the problems that are caused by the way of transgressors to be hard. Proverbs 13, 15 says, the way of transgressors is hard. When God takes believers above the snake line, you're not going through all of those troubles and problems. All you got to do is think about it as you look at uh, in your own family, even among your friends, and you look at the families that are really committed to God, really, really committed to Christ, the whole family, the father, the mother, the children, uh, you will see they have a better life than everybody else. It's a more blessed life. Now listen to this. They have troubles and problems too, like other people, but they don't suffer through the problems like other people because God is right there. God is right there guiding them, leading them, and of course that's one of the benefits of being a committed Christian. We have been elevated above the snake line. We have been elevated above the snake line. When we were born into the world, we were born in the low land of sin. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And then Ephesians 2, verses 1 and 2, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live, when you followed the ways of the world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, which is the devil, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. Now, all of us were like that. We actually were dead in transgressions and sins, and we lived in them, and we followed the devil. But we didn't know we were following the devil. We thought we were following our own mind. Now, of course, we were following our own mind, our corruption, but the devil was leading us. And when uh, folk were trying to get us saved, the devil started interfering, not wanting to allow unbelievers to get saved. Every lost, unsaved person in the world lives below the snake line. Like Israel in the wilderness, Numbers chapter 21. The lost have been bitten by serpents of sin, and all are in great danger. All of us lived below the snake line. The low line of sin is a place of spiritual poverty, weariness, exhaustions, and collapse. Let me say something to you. That's why God has recruited all of us who are believers to go after unbelievers and try to get them to come to Christ. Now, and the reason why is they're not living a good life. They're not experiencing a good life. Now, some of them love sin like myself that hindered me from coming to Christ, but their lives are miserable. The sin that they love probably is more sin, you know, and that's the reason why they, they don't want to come to Christ. They don't want to give it up. Uh, I didn't want to give up uh, alcohol and women. And uh, uh, 
And there, there are a lot of unsaved people that have other issues, uh, reason why they don't want to become Christians. But when you become a Christian, you become born again, you always wish you had done it earlier. You wish you had done it a long time ago. Uh, the lowland of sin is a place of spiritual poverty, weariness, exhaustion, and collapse. It is a place of hopelessness, sorrow, confusion, and pain. That's why they open to receiving Christ. You offer them another life. You don't have to lie to people and make nothing up. Give your own testimony about how God, what difference God makes in your life now. It is a place, it is a place of broken hearts, shattered dreams, ruined relationships, and troubled minds. It is a place where the vicious serpents of sin inject their poison venom over and over, bringing pain, poverty, destruction, and death. The lowland is a place of terrible danger. In the end of the road, for every person bitten by the snake of sin is death. Romans 6.23 for the wages of sin is death. The death referred to in the death Bible is not merely the death that leads to the cemetery. It is a death the Bible calls the second death. It speaks of eternal separation from God himself in the fires of hell. Now some think the worst part about being uh, going to hell is the fires no, the worst thing about being in hell is that you're separated from God. Even as an unsaved person, even as you resisted God and didn't want to become a Christian. However, all of us know that God was in our lives before we became Christians. We know that God was speaking to us before we were Christians. And that God cared about us before we were Christians. But once you get to hell... You're separated from the very presence of God. That is much worse. When a person comes to Jesus Christ for salvation, the person is lifted out of the valley of sin below the snake line and is set on high places with Jesus Christ. The land above the snake line is a place of spiritual replenishment, spiritual abundance, spiritual safety, spiritual security, spiritual hope, and complete spiritual abundance. Above the snake line is the place you want to be. A little girl was playing in the yard when she stopped to examine the flowers in her mother's garden. She said to her mother, Mom, I know why flowers grow. Why, her mother asked, because, explained the little girl, they want to get out of the dirt. That desire to get out of the dirt should be in the heart of every child of God. You should be the one holding your own self accountable because you know what you're doing, you know what secrets you have, and you know what you're hiding. Now, always remember this. What should motivate you is that God knows everything about you. There's nothing hidden from God. Therefore, you cannot fool God. And of course, God promises blessings to those who are the righteous. That means then, if you're not living the way you should, you're missing some benefits. You're missing some blessings from God himself. In Colossians 1, verse 12, giving thanks to the Father who qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. When we come to Christ... Sinners are adopted into the family of God. God becomes our Father. That's why when the Lord taught us to pray, he told us how to always pray. Always address the Father. That's why in the Lord's Prayer, it starts off, our Father. But, listen to this. But, if you're asking God for something, wanting something from God, you are not worthy of receiving anything. 
Therefore, he told us how you're supposed to end your prayer. You're supposed to write the check in Jesus' name. In other words, you pray your prayers in Jesus' name. You, 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 you remind the Lord, of which he needs no reminding, you're not worthy. I want you to do this in Jesus' name. And of course, because of your relationship with Christ, it happens. It happens because you are in Christ. And God is willing to bless you. God is willing to help you. We have been rescued and placed in the kingdom of his dear son. The Greek word here for rescue means to be carried away. When God saved us, he carried us away, taking us out of the low land of sin, the power of darkness, placing us into the kingdom of of his dear son. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 14, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. The word redemption here means to loose after payment of ransom price. We were in bondage. Now listen to this. Some of us really try to live a better life without the power of God and Christ in our life. And we couldn't do it. And one of the reasons we couldn't do it is because until he loose us, we are chained to sin. We are wrapped up in sin. So therefore, you need to, you need to receive Jesus Christ to be delivered from sin. Now, some people think, all they got to do is just join the church. No, you got to commit your will and your heart to Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus died on the cross to redeem us from the wrath of God. He paid our debt in his own blood and set us free to live a life in him. We have the forgiveness of sins. All the things we did in the lowland of sin, along with all corruption produced in us and by us, has been cleansed away, and we have been pardoned by God. Recently it was in the news, and I think since I've been here, I heard about it happening down here too, where there was somebody who was supposed to die uh, pretty soon, or this past week, and it was in Pennsylvania recently too. And the only person that can pardon, as you well know, is the, go is the governor. And the person was asking for a pardon from the governor. Well, that's what God has done for us through Christ. All the sins we've committed in the past. Now this is really powerful. Before we came to Christ for salvation, he forgave. But since we've been saved, we still have the flesh. And all of us have sinned since we've been saved. And the Lord forgives that too. You know what's so amazing about that? Even when we don't ask for forgiveness, he forgives us. But at the same time, God, the Holy Spirit, stays on us and convicts us about our sins when we are trying to be hypocrites. And so the Lord reminds us, we need to repent. Then on the other hand, listen to this. The Bible teaches that God chastises us when we are saved and refuse to repent. Then God can bring some terrible things into your life. And I tell my membership that when you've been in a car accident and your car get hit and you fly up in the air and you stuck up on one of these telephone poles, and they bring you down. It's not a scratch on you. I think God's trying to tell you so. Amen. You cannot keep ignoring God's chastisement. What is he doing in your life right now to try to make you stop sinning the sin that you're sinning? You know he's doing something. I want you to know he got something worse than that. If you refuse and harden your heart and will not repent. We have been empowered against 
the snake line. Colossians 1.11 says, Being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience and joyfully. Strengthened means to be enabled. I want you to understand, all of us have been enabled to live the righteous life, the good life. Power in this verse means authority, force, or power. We've been given the authority, listen, to make decisions about being better people. The force, and we have the power to be better people. Glorious might means a force that extends beyond the ordinary. We have the potential in our life not only to be good Christians, to be extraordinary people, to be an extraordinary Christian. In other words, the extraordinary people were the people that got written about in the Bible. In other words, if you're going to write another chapter of the Bible, you would be in it. But since the Bible is finished now, don't worry about it. <laughs> Patience speaks again of endurance. We are unable to live for God with a power that exceeds ordinary human power. It is great endurance is the power that was used in creation. That's the power that he has placed within us. The end result is that we do not have to live below the snake line any longer. We do not have to be slaves to our passions and sins any longer. Romans 6.14 tells us, For sin shall not be your master, because you are not under the law, but under grace. We have been elevated. We have been enlightened. We have been enabled to live a new life in Jesus Christ. We are enabled to live by his power. A pilot in World War II who took off from one of the Pacific Islands early one morning, a little while after he took off, he heard a scratching noise coming from between the walls of the fuselage of the plane. He soon realized that it was a rat. He cut the engine and heard what sounded like chewing. Between those walls was a rat where the cables controlled the flaps and the rudders, the hydraulic lines, and all the electrical wires. The pilot knew that the rat would eventually chew through something important and cause the plane to crash. There was no way the pilot could get to the rat, but soon settled on a means of killing the rat. Pulling back on the stick, he guided the plane straight up into the air, aiming directly towards the sun. Higher and higher, the plane climbed into the sky. Soon, the plane reached an altitude where there was little oxygen. In a moment, the chewing stopped. When the pilot landed, he soon recovered the dead body of the rat. The plan that saved the pilot was altitude. The rat couldn't live without oxygen. The solution to our sin problem is altitude. Christ is in heaven. He sits on the right hand of the Father praying for us and backing us up and giving us what we need to live the Christian life. We should set our face towards him and climb to a higher altitude when facing sin and temptation. Listen to this now. Stick with Christ. Keep climbing. Keep talking to him, praying to him, walking with him. Listen to this. 
and the desire of the sin will fade away. Just like the rat that died when the pilot went up. Some of you know that. That that's what happens. When you commit yourself that you don't want to do it and you battle against it and you want to live for God, he enables you to be able to do that. We have to stay above the world's snake line. We have to be saved from the snake line. We have to be placed above the snake line by the Lord. We have to be empowered against the snake line. And then we need to praise God that we can beat the snake line. We ought to praise him when we get up. We need to praise him when we lay down. We need to praise him in the noonday. We need to praise him right now because he has enabled us to live above the snake line. Well, thank you once again for tuning in to What's Up with Dr. A. Nathan Young. I hope that today's message blessed you, and I really hope to see you soon live and in person. Come visit us at one of our campuses, either at 1148 North Columbia Street in Covington, Louisiana, or at 57209 Allen Road in Slidell. The Covington services are at 745 and 11 a.m., and the Slidell service is at 9 o'clock a.m. Be my guest at one of our services, at one of our campuses. I can't wait to see you there. If you want to check us out on the web, we're at myfaithbible.org or faithbibleslotl.com. Do me a favor. While you're there, this ministry depends on your support. So click on that giving tab, go to TV ministry, and support this ministry. If you'd rather mail it in, you can mail it to 1148 North Columbia Street in Covington, Louisiana. That's 704 Three, four. Thank you for your support and for your generosity. We depend on it to keep this program going. God bless you. I'll see you next week. <laughs>